Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for taking the time out to join our webinar here. We will get started um, with just an introduction um, regarding the Western region. Uh, we are the Training and Technical Assistance Center for the Administration for Native Americans for the ANA um, for the Western Region Center. Um, <clears throat> My name is Richard White, I'm a technical specialist for the Western region. I've been working for ANA for um, about a year and a half. I'm originally from Window Rock, Arizona, an enrolled member of the Diné Nation, Navajo Nation, um, and currently am located in Bozeman, Montana. And so the presentation we have today is titled Economic Development Master Plan, an avenue to Native American community economic development growth and stability. Um, that's the title of our presentation. And we have a featured presenter. Um, I'll let her get more into her own introduction um, at the beginning of her presentation. But uh, her name is Carolee Wenderoth. She is the Tribal Engagement Coordinator for the US Department of Commerce um, Economic Development Administration. Um, so as um, we have been doing quite a bit these days, um, having to use uh, virtual ways of meeting and providing information such as this webinar. Um, we wanna try to make this um, as interactive as we can um, in order to provide the most helpful information. So um, you see on this slide, there's a few ways you can participate in the webinar. Um, first of all, uh, we want you to, to be asked that you please keep your mic on mute um, when you're not speaking. So um, we don't disrupt the presentation. Um, additionally, um, all of your cameras are turned off um, from my side, and the reason why we, we have that is to save bandwidth because we have um, some folks attending who are from rural areas and maybe not ha don't have quite the bandwidth um, to carry a presentation when there's uh, uh, videos going, so we just want to make sure that everyone has um, as equitable access to the presentation um, as possible, so that's why we have all the cameras turned off, um, including mine. And just to, to a reminder to stay, like, stay on gallery view when um, not screen sharing, so um, we don't have to worry about that. And so using the Zoom features, um, again, please uh, keep your microphone on mute. Um, when we do get to the question and answer portion of the presentation, feel free to unmute yourself um, if you have any questions or comments. Additionally, you can use the chat button um, located on, <coughs> excuse me, located on, um, the, uh, the doc for Zoom, um, you see the icon there. So if you have any questions um, or if you have any information you'd like to share, um, feel free to type it in the chat box. And we have a person monitoring the chat box to, to um, keep that um, open for communication. And additionally, you have, you have a reactions button um, and you can, you can participate by clicking on the reactions button and you have things like thumbs up, you have like a, a hand clap icon, you have a raise the hand icon, so you're able to participate um, using those um, features within Zoom. So um, as I mentioned, we will have a Q&A session. Um, we're gonna hold all questions until after the presentation is over, but if you feel um, like you wanna ask a question, um, feel free to type it in the chat and we will get to it at the end. Um, in addition to when we do have the question and answer portion um, towards the end of the presentation, if you feel um, you wanna ask a, a question directly, feel free again, like I mentioned, to unmute yourself and, and ask away um, to our presenter or to, to anyone who's in the audience um, regarding today's uh, information and presentation. So a recording of this webinar will be made um, online at our website, www.anawestern.org. So that'll be coming in the next few weeks. Um, and just an introduction for the administration of Native Americans, the mission of ANA is to support Native-led nonprofits and eligible tribes by promoting self-sufficiency, providing funding for community-based projects, and providing free training and technical assistance. And ANA's vision is to see that all Native communities are thriving. And so ANA supports three main priority areas, and they include the social and economic development strategies, also known as SEDS and SEDS AK. Um, for those communities located in Alaska, as well as native languages, which include preservation and maintenance projects, as well as the Esther Martinez immersion, um, language immersion projects. In addition to that, the environmental regulatory enhancement, otherwise known as ERE, um, 
uh, area uh, funding area is the, the third area in which ANA supports um, and prioritizes within uh, Indian country. So just real quick, the social and economic strategies um, SEDs, you see the funding threshold here. They're for projects from one to three years. Um, they promote social well-being, perpetuation of culture and economic self-sufficiency. Um, for this year, the project start uh, project starts um, September 30th and then um, rolling through uh, the subsequent September 29th. Um, total project funding is approximately $12 million and total projects that are going to be awarded are 48 for this year and the submission deadline for um, these SEDS uh, projects is April 15th. And for more information, you can go to the ANA website regarding um, the notice of funding opportunity. You have a link um, listed here on this slide. And so um, today's presentation um, revolves around the, the tribal master plans um, for community and economic development and infra infrastructure. So for this funding, uh, period for this funding cycle within the SEDS social economic development strategies um, funding opportunity, there is a legislative economic development bonus point. So ANA is putting a special emphasis on um, projects that do involve the development of a tribal master plan for community and economic development, development and infrastructure. So um, there is an emphasis on making this a priority area within Indian country um, for communities to look for this funding opportunity, um, to put an emphasis on it and to, to try to um, provide an avenue for which communities are able to, to apply for these funding opportunities in order to be awarded so um, they can help perpetuate positive change within um, their own community um, amongst their own uh, people. So um, that is how this information, the information that's going to be presented um, today has a, a direct um, line to what ANA's funding priority is for this year. Um, so if you have any questions about that, um, feel free to contact uh, me. You can, you can contact me directly um, regarding any type of uh, questions regarding ANA's emphasis um, on this tribal master plan for community economic development and infrastructure. Um, that can provide you some additional information. And we'll also be posting in the chat um, links to our website, links to the ANA website. Um, as well as uh, links to uh, the notice of funding opportunity and where you can find that on the ANA website. Um, so with that said, um, we will go ahead and begin the presentation and I will hand it, hand it over to Carolee. Carolee. Thank you, Richard. Um, welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today. My name is Carolee Windroth as Richard indicated, and I am the Tribal Engagement Coordinator for the Economic Development Administration, or EDA, which is at the US Department of Commerce. I'm an enrolled member of the Confederated Salish and Kootenai Tribes um, in Montana, and I am honored to be with you all today. Today, I'll be discussing economic development master plans, um, the importance or significance of them, and the Native American uh, Program Act and the changes that have been made since um, some legislation. Thank you to ANA for having this presentation. Economic development is a strong tool for tribes to experience self-determination. Next slide, please. Native communities have experienced disproportional barriers to economic development. Economic development is crucial for building capacity in Indian country in other areas, such as law enforcement, health, education, natural resource management and infrastructure. This was a quote directly from Cheryl Andrews Maltese, who was the senior policy advisor. Um, and this was testimony that was from legislative hearing before the Senate Committee on Indian Affairs in 2016. I bring this up because as you can see by this statement alone, this has been a reality long before COVID-19. But the pandemic exposed just how vulnerable tribal communities are. One of the ways to address challenges to economic development is preparation. Preparation is achieved when planning for future economic disturbances and resiliency are including are included in strategic planning. Next slide, please. 
important measures have taken place in an effort to address challenges that tribes have experienced with economic development. These measures include components of Senate Bill 212, the Indian Community Economic Enhancement Act of 2019, which following many listening sessions became law in December of 2021. Senate Bill 212 amends three laws, the Native American Business Development, Trade Promotion and Tourism Act of 2000, the Native American Program Act and the Buy Indian Act. These amendments are significant to Indian country. The Native American Programs Act of 1974 is administered by the Administrator for Native American Affairs within the Department of Health and Human Services and was enacted in law as part of President Johnson's War on Poverty Initiative. ANA provides grants to one, assist Native communities in social and economic development, two, to build capacity of Native communities to plan and develop environmental programs, and three, to provide support to Native communities that are seeking to preserve the Native languages. The amendments of Senate Bill 212 reauthorizes economic development programs and prioritizes grant applications that develop master plans for community and economic development. Prior to Senate Bill 212, the Napa grants or Native American Program Act grants, they did not prioritize or encourage master planning for economic development. So this is a critical change and the, um, the move itself um, is a strong um, commitment that this administration is showing that the importance of planning is there for tribes at the local um, and regional level. And this is one strong component to make that happen. Next slide, please. So what is a master plan? A master plan is a guide used to help communities or regions create a vision of what they wanna look like in the future and helps guide decisions on land use development and preservation. Next slide, please. So why is a, a master plan important? Well, it's designed to build capacity and to guide the economic prosperity and resiliency of a community or region. There are many resources across the federal government as well as state and local governments to assist native communities with economic development. Having a master plan better prepares communities to seek funding that aligns with needs and encourages leveraging of resources. For example, a community or region determine their priority as broadband and seek out funding opportunities from agencies where broadband is their program, such as NTIA, which is a sister bureau within the US Department of Commerce. There are many other agencies with funding opportunities to support broadband implementation such as USDA and Treasury and recognized needs and objectives in a master plan sets the community or region up to more effectively combine funding opportunities to achieve goals. Having a plan also readies a community to take advantage of emerging markets such as space commerce. Um, looking around at Indian country, how many tribes or tribal organizations can say that they are ready to take on space commerce. And if they're not, what will it take to get there? This is the kind of planning that a master plan is designed to go after. So there's a couple of components to why the master plan is important. Um, and one of the most critical is it serves as a means to engage community leaders and leverage involvement of the private sector to establish a blueprint for collaboration there's nothing that's more critical to an overall plan than the collaboration of different sectors. Uh, master plans are designed to encourage this type of collaboration. It also for forces a tribe to look at the needs, uh, makes the community or the region assess needs and identify the resources that are available for those needs. Is it the workforce development? Is it the educational components? or is it physical infrastructure capacity? Um, these are all elements that when working on a master plan and identifying what those needs look like are all going to be factors in how we recover and how we're resilient down the road. 
A master plan too identifies conditions and trends to aid in consistent decision making and what the impacts of those decisions will look like. So there are sometimes um, impacts that you don't plan for. Those are unintended consequences that happen, but having a master plan is designed to promote the best path forward with limited impacts as possible. A master plan also promotes prudent use of resources. As the world grows and things get built more and more, the protection of those resources and using them prudently is ever more important for each tribal nation. And having a master plan is designed to um, decisively give the right direction and how to prudently use those resources. Next slide, please. So there are resources available. Well, actually, let me take a step back. There's another important part of planning and that plan is to plan for resiliency. No one was ready for the COVID pandemic shock that it created to the economy, especially all across Indian country. So what does resiliency look like? Resiliency is broadly defined by EDA as the ability of, to, of a community or region to anticipate, withstand and bounce back from various disruptions to its economic base. And these disruptions can be caused by the many things. It's not necessarily just a pandemic, but it could be impacts of climate change. It could be a natural disaster. Um, it could be uh, many forms. And so what does it take when you um, to get to a point where you're resilient in your planning for the future? Um, you can define ways to help a community transition from an economy dependent on one industry that may be susceptible to downturns in the wake of a pandemic, such as workforce development and skills training. As we all, as we all recognize through the pandemic, broadband connectivity and that digital divide gap was very prevalent in our workforce um, when our telework, our telehealth, and our educational components, um, kids that couldn't go to school because they didn't have internet or they didn't have computers at home, um, people that didn't have transportation to get to the doctors but didn't have computers or internet to be able to do telehealth. All of these were factors that were heightened by the pandemic. And so as we look forward to how we build out our economies, our workforce skills and our training are going to include um, that connection, the broadband, who's going to dig trenches and lay fiber, who's going to be our IT support, who's going to be all of these factors that go into this, these are all things that you can look into and in building out our resiliency plan as ideas for how do we be prepared for what's supposed to happen down the road. So business preparedness is un in understanding impact of disruptions such as supply chains. We all felt the impact um, of having no supplies on our store shelves and what that did to communities, especially in rural America and across Indian country. Um, having businesses um, understand what those impacts look like and how to overcome those. This is all language and all communicative parts that are important for uh, master plans to, to think about and incorporate into resiliency type planning. Development and construction of resilient infrastructure and new technologies such as broadband and energy to mitigate future vulnerability. And I think I've covered broadband. Um, comprehensive planning efforts that involve community engagement to create and implement a collective economic vision which cannot be underscored enough. It really does take a community and it really does take strong engagement to come up with those visions and to come up with those planning efforts that are going to be accepted and implemented community-wide with a collective vision. Resilience within the context of economic development is strengthened when it includes measures to mitigate the potential for future economic injury, promote faster recovery time for economic anchors and strengthen local and regional capacity to address vulnerabilities within the regional economy. Next slide, please. There are resources available to help with planning. As mentioned earlier, ANA provides grants. The Department of Interior offers funding for planning and feasibility studies. And EDA has funding for planning as well. Current funding opportunities include the Indigenous Communities Program, which the deadline for submission of applications is March 31st. This is a $100 million 
program allocated specifically to tribal projects. Um, and this is a very flexible uh, program and it, it does include planning. I was one of the accepted project types. Um, as I said before, it's tribal specific, so there's less competition. It's 100% grant rate, so there's no match um, required for this particular program. And it's um, in EDA uh, changed a federal rule that allows for uh, for profit corporations to now be eligible to apply for the funding. Um, and so that is a new rule change to expand eligibility. Aside from the Indigenous Communities Program, EDA also has the Economic Adjustment Assistance Program and the EDA Planning and Local Technical Assistance Program. And these are all programs designed to help um, tribal communities plan for, again, recovery, but also plan for that resiliency moving forward. Um, the EDA operates on with six locations that are our regional offices. And each region has what we call economic development representatives and those, or EDRs, those EDRs are crucial. They are specialists and boots on the ground and tribes who are interested in learning more about our programs and learning more about how to apply and how to become ready to apply are encouraged to speak directly with our EDRs that are in the field. Um, the information for, uh, for our EDRs um, we'll share um, as part of this program, but it really does, um, those specialists are, are, are boots on the ground. And like I said, very important for anybody interested in learning more about these programs and how to engage to really get that relationship formed with your economic development representative. Next slide, please. So to recap, master planning is crucial to a community or region obtaining capacity economic prosperity and resiliency. Senate Bill 212 amended the Native American Program Act of 1974 to foster economic development by prioritizing master plans. And as Richard indicated earlier, please go to their website um, to learn more about um, what that opportunity means for individuals looking to come up with those uh, master plans. And also check out the EDA website too for available funding opportunities to assist with any planning documents or questions. Um, I, and my information um, here on this screen here is um, Carolee Windroth, there's my name and my title and there's my web, or I'm sorry, my email address. Um, and then below those are three links to the uh, planning programs um, that I mentioned before, uh, whether it's Department of Interior or the ones at EDA, um, you know, they're, they're very crucial resources that um, are willing to go the mile to help Indian country um, get back on its feet and, and pave the path forward for a prosperous economic recovery. And thank you for your time today. I appreciate um, ANA again for letting me uh, be here today and to share this information with you. Um, and please reach out whenever you have questions or if I can guide you to any resource, I'm happy to do so. Thank you, Richard, and I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Carolee, I appreciate that. Um, some helpful information um, and uh, uh, really important uh, information for um, all of our communities. And, and uh, we all know folks who um, feel passionate about economic development within our communities. Um, and we all know the need for um, sustaining and, and maintaining and, and, and creating um, economies for, for our people. So I really appreciate that.